Welcome back, 0K fans. Nanolades are done. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and we have a game between El Torero and Anarchid. I still don't know why I have a hard time rolling my R's for El Torero. El Torero. El Torero. Torero. It's the Torre. It's the Ore part. Ore. Ore. El Torero. El Torero. Okay, that's a bit better. Sorry about that. Anyway, El Torero and Anarchid. Although, actually, according to their GitHub name, it's Anarchid, not Anarchid, but they didn't write with a K, so I'm just going to call them, continue calling them Anarchid because, well, if you want it to be pronounced properly, write it in Cyrillic. Now, as I was saying, with this game, it is on Fairyland, which is a new map I haven't really had a chance to even play. Like I said, I've been busy. It's a bit more dynamic than the last one. I like the look of it. I mean, it's not as fancy looking in terms of texture effects as Zed was. But it looks dynamic. It looks like a map where stuff happens. Like there's actual, I mean, there's positions. Probably a good air start map, just because it's kind of like Ravage. You have that opening position with two ramps this time. Not one, but still, two ramps. And I... Okay, I gotta... Sorry, one small adjustment to the camera. Normally it's fine, but sometimes some maps you gotta turn smooth mesh scrolling on. Otherwise you just get a really annoying effect whenever you go over the water pools. Now, as I was saying, this map... Two ramps rather than one, but it's still got a similar design. However, it's also got a design kind of like Titan Duel, which plays very well because of the diagonal starts. Although Ravage has that too, but Ravage, I don't know, it's not quite the same. There's no natural, there's no easy natural expansion here the way there is on Ravaged. There's sort of a natural expansion, but it's not as powerful, it's not as obvious, and there isn't the same way you have like, pits and such that are kind of these obvious expansions. It's a bit more fluid, but it's still got that same terrain setup where you really need to worry about hills and you need to worry about, a bit about choke points and the ramps and paths kind of mean something beyond just being decoration. Like, they actually make a difference. Although, I'm not sure how much of a difference they do make. They are fairly wide, but I imagine for larger later game battles, it is going to be very important to know where you actually you pick your battles and where you pick them. That is going to be important. From what I can tell. Just from... I'm, I'm guessing, honestly. But it looks like that'll probably be the case. I am looking forward to seeing how this map's gonna play out. In general. But uh, particularly on this map, because... I'm uh, sorry, on this game, because this is the game I'm watching right now between Anarchid and El Torero. So El Torero is... Kogi as is Anarchid. And El Torero is focusing a bit more on their... Defense from the looks of it. Anarchid going for economy very quickly, very bold. Sending their commander out first. Well, El Torero using the commander instead on the south, on the north side, not for the not for the two, but for the one, the one metal expansion, which is a little bit curious. So Anakid right now has a stronger economy as a result of that. So El Torero is, are they kind of going in here? Okay, it looks like Anarchid's already got the northwest pretty much on lock, and they're doing that. They're doing that jump maneuver where they go across the entire map and then probably going to expand back from there after setting up a bit of a position, a bit of a firebase over to the northwest. But yeah, that was a good tick blast, by the way. I didn't quite see that, but yes, that was a very powerful tick blast from El Torero, taking out three of Anarchid's Glaives, but Anarchid, not going to be too concerned. Glaives come and go. It's not that big of a deal. Some good micro. I mean, right now, it's 4v4 for these Glaives. It's an even matchup. It's no big deal. Anarchid can micro out of this. El Torero can also micro out of this, so, you know. It is an even matchup. It's going to come down to who's paying attention more at the time. But it looks like El Torero is actually going to be ahead in this one if... Ooh, a nice pull there! I thought Anarchid was going to lose those glaives to the commander, but no, they pulled out one of El Torero's glaives and took it out. Just without it really expecting it. It looks like they're going to snipe another one. So that's two glaives down for free. That pretty much... Not, oh, another glaive lost for Anarchid. Doesn't quite make up for it, but Anarchid still has the economic advantage. Still have a couple extra metal extractors on top of El Torero, and they also have... Like, El Torero does not have this area here. Just getting it to El Torero going... Okay, they're going safe. They're not leapfrogging the way that Anarchid was over to the southeast side. They're going metal extractor by metal extractor defenses, just over defenses. Playing it very safe, playing it very defensive, and very... Very simple coordinated match. Anarchid, on the other hand, is focusing more on large maneuvers, as we can see here, with the northwest jump. I mean, it's still well protected. The, the defenses are there, don't get me wrong, but that was a bold move. 
The problem is going to be consolidating. It's going to be unifying these two sides and getting a nice un getting a nice front here. But it does mean these two metal extractors, there's nothing there. El Torero cannot kill anything because there's nothing there to kill. While Anarchy, on the other hand, they can't kill anything because El Torero has already set up defenses, but still. The point is, right now, Anarchy can't actually rebuild this area because El Torero was right there. That slowed them down. However, that is more for stability for El Torero. Anarchid still is ahead. They've been ahead economically this entire game. They only lost a handful of units. Like, really, they're maybe one glaive behind, one or two glaives behind, which at this point is pretty much random noise. There are enough glaives in the field that I don't think it's a big deal, and the next battle is going to really be the thing that makes the difference as far as unit advantage. And it looks like El Torero going to lose another glaive. Yep, another glaive gets sniped for free. A lot of free glaives. Oh! And the tick gets stuffed! That tick got stuffed hard. There was nothing next to it. The only the only upside for El Torero right there is that they didn't have their own glaives next to that tick. Unfortunately, another downside. El Torero's commander goes down. All the glaives... All but one glaive die and the comms burst. But still, that was a lot of damage. And Anarchist commander under some threat, but much better defended. However, it's got to jump. It's got to jump now. Get into that water. Or just get across. That works too. Actually, that works better because they can now build the expansion. If they so choose. So Anarchid's, Anarchid is way ahead right now. They just, they've had the economic advantage. They've consolidated this western side, the central western set of mexes. They just smashed up El Torero's commander. El Torero's commander, El Torero's commander has been destroyed inside of Anarchid's territory. Like, this conjurer just goes over here. Easy 800 metal. Well, almost. There's a tick going over to try to protect that, but it looks like it's mainly used as a frontline defense. So El Torero right now... I gotta get better at that. El, to El Torero right now is dealing with this, but it's a bit tr bit tricky. Tri tricky. Nah, screw it. Anyway, screw it. It's not going to work. El Torero right now is definitely... I guess, yeah, it's switching back and forth between English and Spanish. I mean, I'm actually probably more doing French than Spanish, but yeah. El Torero. El Torero. <laughs> I'll get it one day. El Torero is falling behind hard. Anarchid has doubled the economy. El Torero has basically their base. They have, after that big hill, they have the other side of the ridge. But Anarchid with a nice little scythe there coming in to smash things up, because why not? Okay, yeah, this is the map that was I was mentioning before with Zed. Zed is actually the Moose's Loose's original design. This map, Fairyland, is apparently based off of the StarCraft 2 map, Cloud Kingdom. Which I'm actually kind of surprised by. It's because the way the metal extractors are arranged, this doesn't feel like a StarCraft port. I mean, I realize, yeah, there's kind of the cliffs and ramps and choke point thing, but that could just be a StarCraft style map that's designed around Zero K's economy. Because the fact that there's two metal extractors per expansion rather than three or four means that the expansions really fit better with the way that Zero K's economy tends to be more fluid with expansions. Although they are kind of separated, which is different. Most Zero K maps have metal extractors fairly closely connected. I don't mind the separation though, I think that's not a bad thing, but having the two metal extractors per spot rather than three or four means that you have two or three, like you have areas that you have to think about a little bit more. Because three or four in Zero K is basically mindlessly go for it. Two is worth thinking about a little bit. It's not always worth the time and effort. Usually is. But it still kind of gives you that strategic choice for 0k, which you don't necessarily get with 3 or 4 per expansion. And speaking of that, though, Anarchid losing expansion hard to one of El Torero's counterattacks. Very hard. Looks like all the power is going to go out, too. Though Anarchid right now with a fusion plant in their main base. Or, no, no fusion plant. Never mind. Just a bunch of wind generators. Because they don't care. Ticks came in handy, though. But still, that's... El Torero has been doing pretty well with those ticks. But they've been playing a defensive game. This entire game, they've been playing very defensively. And this has been their... Basically, their counterattack was those glaives. Still way behind on economy, though. If they can get rid of the Northwest, that is going to be extremely powerful. If they can get rid of that and then take it for themselves... Because they have a decent path to it. That could work out beautifully. However, Anarchy doing the same thing to, to El Torero's eastern side... So, if El Torero plays this right, they're basically going to go from a diagonal split to, or, yeah, kind of diagonal split across this path here, across this ridge, to a pure north-south split. And it looks like that's likely what's going to happen. El Torero has taken out the western, the northern-western expansions. Anarchid, the same thing with the south and eastern expansions. 
And Anarchist's going to be taking the southeast. El Torero is probably going to take the northeast, or northwest. Northeast being their starting base, they already have that. If they lose that, that's a really bad sign. But no, they are probably going to take the northwest, which... If, or just go for Reclaim, which is even better. How many Conjures do they have, by the way? That's all the Conjures. There are 11 Conjures in the game, of which looks like 5 belong to El Torero, and the other 6 belong to Anarchid. Pretty even amount. That Glaive got stuffed again. I mean, Anakin right now not running as many Glaives. Them, or, that Tick got stuffed, not Glaive. And Anakin going for the probably the kill. Trying to take out what Metal Extractors they can. All the Metal Extractors. Take them all out. Are they going to do that? No, they're going for the Factory instead. Or, no, no, never mind. That was Metal Extractors. That was the plan. They just have a bunch of Decoy Bombers. I'm kind of surprised they aren't splitting up they didn't split up all in the way. Because, I mean, okay, they didn't see what was going on, but you know where the metal extraction points are, so you can just set up bombs and you just say, oh, I'm going to bomb here and here and here, and okay, you don't know where they are, but you know that they're metal extraction points. That's where the metal extractors are going to be. Smash up El Torero's economy that way. But this ravaging pack of glaives, 22 glaives, Anarchist commander... So this is the one thing. El Torero could turn this game around right now if they actually do a lot of things, including reconstructing this expansion here, rebuilding this expansion here, getting solid defenses along these expansions, probably setting these, up these warriors into really opportune positions, and most importantly, given the fact that they don't have much production, but they do have a fairly large army of glaives, kill Anarchist Commander without, or avoid it entirely. Either avoid Anarchist Commander, or if they try to kill it, kill it without losing the glaives in the calm burst that will inevitably follow. Now it looks like they are going for the Commander, and the Commander will not will die? It will die, and the, all the glaives die in the burst. That's all of El Torero's army of glaives gone. However, they did even out the economy fairly well between that and and taking more metal extractors and the reclaim. So right now, the game's actually stabilized a little bit. However, it's not stabilized that well. Anarchid is still way ahead. They have the energy, they have the reclaim available in their territory. They haven't taken much, actually. I mean, they have this whole... Where are their workers? Yeah. They have this whole area here. There's still 800 metal they can easily get. So it's not, I mean, El Torero's, El Torero's commander is right there. So that's, there's no, uh, Anarchids, even without the commander, it was the commander and keeping the glaives alive was the big thing. And that's nail in the coffin right there. El Torero's just lost their power and structure. Like, they've lost a lot of, huh, invisible fire. Oh, never mind, the game's over, yeah. That's game, like that was, that was the thing that El Torero realized. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Game's over. There's nothing I can do. Power's gone. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That was an interesting map. I like this map. I like the look of it. I like the way it seems to play. I like the fact that the expansions require a little bit more thought because they aren't as valuable individually and they're a little bit separated. Still valuable, and you still actually have a fair amount of money in basically plus two each. So that's pretty much an easy 20 medal without going into Overdrive or Reclaim. Which for a 1v1 map, that's fairly reasonable. For 2v2 that would be a little low, but for 1v1 that's not bad. Like, that's 30 metal without getting into Reclaim. It's a bit more on the Famine side, but that's 30 metal without getting into Reclaim and without contesting territory. Like, that's just sort of if you get an even split. 25 to 30 metal with basically no territory con contest? That's... That's a lot of metal. That basically makes pretty much any factory viable right at the start. And this map could be interesting. I mean, the fact that you have... I mean, this is for jump bots, obviously. Spiders would have a bit of a tough time, I think. That's the one factory I would see having a harder time doing well in this map. They could still do fairly well, though. They could still run down the cliffs. They can't go across them easily, but they can run down them, use that for cover, use that for ambushes, set up fleas, like, down the sides here. There's room for spiders here, too. Although, spiders are generally considered to be underpowered at the moment. So, I'm not sure how well that would work. But it'd be very interesting to try. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks again for watching, and like I said, I am not going to be here on Friday and Saturday. And... Sorry about that. Busy. Cousin's getting married. So... It's a thing. Weddings are a thing that you are kind of... That I go to. Because because they're family. And also, 
cousins are my cousins are close. They, my cousins and I are close, so it's it'd be like going to a sibling's wedding. Anyway, so yeah, Saturday's busy wedding. Someone else is getting married, not me. That's not gonna happen. Friday is busy for other reasons, but yeah, I'm busy. Don't expect me until next Tuesday. And then there should be a tournament that following Saturday. Sign up for that. Because even if you don't know if you're going to win, tournament experience is really good experience. 1v1 tournament should be on Saturday the 26th. Hasn't been announced yet. Probably won't be until Sunday the 20th. Once again, thank you for watching and have a good night. Orphilius, must you make fun of my accidental lisp in that one sentence? Cousin. Okay, I may have said cousin, but I was trying to do the Spanish thing, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't really trying to do the Spanish thing. El Torero's name is surprisingly difficult to pronounce. I don't get what that is. El Torero. 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 Do it that way. <laughs> no, that's not how you do it. Anyway. Sorry about that. Good night, everyone.